Hey guys, welcome back for a tutorial style video on how to install LVP flooring like a professional except it's a DIY. I've got a ton of tips and hacks that I'm going to share with you for how you can remove your old flooring, specifically carpet, repair any damage that there might be to your wooden subfloors, and prep your surface for a flawless LVP DIY install. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial that should answer any questions that you have and give you all of the confidence that you need to do this install yourself. So if you're ready, give this a thumbs up and let's get started. Okay, today is the day. These carpets are going. We're going to be replacing the flooring in the entire house except for the bathroom. So all bedrooms, closets, living room, kitchen. We're just replacing it all with LVP flooring. We have it laid out here from Florette. I chose the Knockin Craftsman line. It's so beautiful. It has some coastal elements, a little bit of variation. It's just absolutely gorgeous neutral LVP. But we're going to be replacing all of this carpet with that. So let's get started. So to start pulling up all of the carpets, you want to pull it out from under the baseboards. They're usually not tucked in too far, so it doesn't take too much. You could just do that with your hands. You don't need any specialty tools. And then you'll use a box cutter like you see here and just cut long sections of the carpet so that you can roll it up kind of like a fruit roll up and that will make it so much easier for you to remove from the home. Now you can also cut a little strip like this and a slit in the side and then weave it through and this kind of creates a hand that secures that roll up so that you can just pick it up and take it straight out the door that is just a little hack that will make your life so much easier if you are doing a project like this now if you're unaware if you have carpet in your home that is not the only layer there's also this carpet padding that goes underneath so you're going to need to remove and roll that up as well kind of like removing two carpet layers this is tacked down where whereas the carpet isn't. So you do have to pull that away from the tacks. And then you're left with these tack strips that border the perimeter of the area. So around all of the baseboards. And there are also staples all throughout your flooring that kept that carpet pad secured. So you're going to want to make sure that you remove every single one of those along with the tack strips. And that can sound overwhelming to think you're responsible for every single one, you can't miss any. But if you just use a crowbar, the pronged side of the crowbar is perfect to get right up under them and to remove them all with minimal effort or elbow grease on your end. It is a little bit of a shoulder workout, but I promise it's really not too bad. And then another tip that I have for you is to clean up as you go. Don't let those carpet rolls and carpet pads pile up just start taking them out to your dump truck. Sweep behind you in each section. This will not only keep your workplace tidy, but it also will ensure that you're not missing any of those staples because you would feel them with the broom. And then also make sure you get a shop vac in there instead of relying on a dust pan and vacuum up all of the dust, the debris, and especially those staples. You don't want to leave any behind. And that's not just for the flooring install, but it's also for your own protection. You don't want to step on one or leave lean on one and end up with one of those dirty staples in your forearm or your foot. Now I also wanted to address the elephant in the room because I'm sure you're noticing that I seem to have a ton of help here from people that look like they're professionals. And they are. We did hire professionals for this job. That's because this was all due to a plumbing leak that caused us to have to replace our flooring and there was a homeowner's insurance claim that was involved. So to be on the up and up with all of that, we had to hire professionals. But I was still hands on throughout every single step of this process and also sharing tons of DIY clips with you so that I could show you no matter your size or your skill level, you can do this yourself. Everything that I'm sharing with you today, I observed and took part in and helped them to do. So I'm able to speak from experience and a professional experience. But just for reference, I'm 5'4", 125 pounds, and manual labor has never been my strong suit, but I was able to apply all of these techniques, tips, and hacks that I'm sharing with you, use all 
of the tools that you're seeing in today's video and was able to be hands-on throughout every step of this process so that I can say you could totally do this because you can, you can totally do this. And I hope that this gives you that extra boost of encouragement and confidence that you may be needing to try it yourself. But after we had removed all of the carpets and we were down to subfloors, we noticed some creaks in the floor that we wanted to go away. So we're gonna do a few quick and easy repairs using these specialty screws. They also come with a specialty drill bit that is magnetic, so it will hold onto the screw for you. That stabilizes it and makes it just so much easier to do. Don't skip on this, it's totally worth it. You can find these at any local hardware store. And you're just going to screw the subfloor down to the joist along the entirety of that section, and that is going to eliminate all of those creaks and sounds that you don't want to come through with your new flooring. We also had some larger repairs that needed to be done, specifically in our kitchen. This is where the plumbing leak had originated and some of the water sitting under there had deteriorated away some of the wood of the subfloor. So we need to replace those sections. And in order to do that, we have to start by making a bigger hole in the floor. I know that seems a little counterintuitive, but this is just a way to have a seamless transition or repair. If you're working in one of those tiny little areas, you would have to be super precise with those measurements but if you have a large square or a large rectangle it's a lot easier to measure and replace that section and then when you have a larger surface area you don't notice the transition between the old floor and the new repair quite so much so anyway we just cut a larger rectangle in this space and then used a crowbar in the back of the hammer to pull up that section and get it loose from those joists and then we were left with this huge hole you could literally see straight down to the subfloor so we cleaned up all of those edges made sure that there was no splintering wood or anything like that and that we had straight even lines even measurements and then on either side those end joists we screwed in some two by fours for support this just creates a little larger of a surface area so that when you're screwing in those edges of the repair you can make sure for certain that you are hitting the joist and that it's as secure as it can be so we just had those two by fours and then we're also going to use some liquid nails on all of the joists just to keep this extra secure and in place and make sure this repair is perfect as you can see that section was just cut out and then once it's in place you just use those same screws as we did for all of the creeks screw it down on all of the joists and this is how it turned out So the last prep step is to remove your baseboards. You only need to do this if you're not intending to use quarter round, and we were not. So we wanted to actually remove and replace our baseboards, but you could save on material costs by removing and resetting, which just means reusing the ones that you've removed. And if you are going to reuse them, then you should definitely make sure to label each individual piece on both the baseboard and the section you got it from to make reinstall a lot easier. But now we're ready to install this new flooring. So we went with Florette's Moden LVP and the color knock-in, the style craftsman, it is the best on the market in my opinion. I am so impressed with this product. It comes with a pre-attached underlayment which saves you so much on material costs because then you don't have to get anything to go between your subfloor and your flooring. You can just lay it straight down onto your subfloor and because the color we chose has some variation in the planks we decided to go with this stair step technique with six inch indents on each row for five rows and then kind of starting over just to give a more natural install and mimic the look of hardwood and wait until you see the final product it is absolutely gorgeous. Now these Fleuret LVP planks are so easy to install because of their click together lock mechanisms. You just make sure that they're lined up on either side and then tap the ends into place to make sure that they have locked and are secure. You can use this universal tapping block to do that. It has a long end and a shorter end, 
groove so no matter what kind of planks you're using it will work that's why it's called universal it's just a couple dollars and you can find it at any local hardware store so just pointing that out to say that there's no need for super expensive specialty tools power tools you don't need any of that to get this job done just a tapping block a rubber mallet or a hammer and some really good quality floor planks will do the job for you I am so impressed with florets flooring now they do have three different styles in each of their color offerings on their website for the Moden LVP. They also have a entire selection of hardwood flooring if you're looking for that, but I can just speak to my experience with the LVP. I ordered samples for all of the light and medium tones and you guys ultimately ended up choosing for me because there were just so many good ones I could not decide for myself. I pulled you in my community tab a couple of times and on my Instagram stories and knock-in is what you chose for my home and I am so grateful because I think it is a beautiful color. It is in the light to medium neutral range and has a very high light reflective value which is perfect for my home. I have a smaller home in general but there's very limited natural light source in my house so that often left me feeling like our home is smaller than it actually is it was darker it just was like damp and cold feeling but now that we have these new floors in from Florette it is so gorgeous it's opened the space so much it feels light and bright and airy it reflects the daylight all the time giving the illusion that there's more natural light sources and that our home is bigger and more spacious it's exactly what I wanted it's also neutral enough that it could go with literally any decor or furniture style and it's just fitting my needs exactly. So I'm so thankful that you guys pushed me in this direction and chose this color. I did choose the Craftsman size planks. They're three and a half inches wide and I chose them because they mimic hardwood in my opinion and they're just perfect for all of the variation in this color. I absolutely love them. But Florette does offer three different style choices. So you can go with the nine inch wide signature plank for a wider, more luxurious feel. You could go with the three and a half inch wide craftsman like I did to mimic hardwood and have a more timeless look in my opinion. Or there is the seven inch base plank which is just a little bit more budget friendly without sacrificing on the quality of the product that you're ordering. So there's literally something for every style preference, every budget preference. You can find it at Florette. I do have a discount code for you. I'll leave the link down in the description box but you can save 50% off of your florette samples using that link. But now that we have the flooring installed, we are ready to move on to the baseboard. So I'm going to show you some tips and hacks to make this install so much easier because this kind of work can be tedious. So number one, measure twice, cut once. Well, actually you're going to cut a bunch of times because there's all kinds of measurements, but you get the gist of what I'm saying. Make sure that you are measuring multiple times so that you're not making mistakes and you can save on the overall material cost. Another tip is to miter your edges. This is going to give you the best corners possible instead of butting things up together and having it look like a DIY. This is a difference maker for a professional looking finish. And then also if you have any super small slivers like this one in doorways or anything like that, put those together before you take it inside. You can use some spray adhesive and some wood glue. That spray adhesive will give you a little bit of extra support to hold those pieces into place while the wood glue starts to set and dry and then you'll be left with these perfectly manufactured pieces that will just fit seamlessly into the spaces you need them to instead of trying to cut something like that and install it individually. You can see here it just slides right into place and then you don't have to worry about measuring that little sliver and installing it by itself and lining it all up. Once you have it into place you just use a brad nailer and nail the baseboard in at all of the studs in the wall just to make sure that it's super secure and then the finishing work includes caulking and painting which I I have shown in a DIY makeover a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to do that so I'll link it if you want to go check that out and see how you can do the finishing work on your baseboards for a professional looking finish this is what everything is looking like installed it is 
so beautiful i'm really happy with our color choice i feel like it looks like the sand at the beach with just the subtle variation those craftsman planks it's just gorgeous it feels like our home is a vacation which is such a cool feeling as you can see i've already started polishing up some of these spaces i've done our entryway and also our bedroom so far those videos are already up on my channel so you can go check them out but this flooring just works in every single room in every single lighting i've got a little bit more to do in here but i just couldn't cover the floors with an area rug yet so this is what we've got for our living room it flows beautifully into the bedrooms it's just everything that i was hoping that it would be and i love the way that this turned out so hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along for this process and i was able to share a ton of tips and tricks to help you out in case you are also going to be installing your own lvp flooring if you enjoyed today's video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you aren't already for more diy makeovers and i'll see you all in the next one